Welcome back to another instalment of New Zealand's Bird of the Week, where in this video I will be talking about the Chasm Island oyster catcher, stocky wading birds that are the only member of their group on the Chasm Islands. I hope you enjoy. Chasm Island oyster catchers are most similar to the pied morph of the variable oyster catcher, which have similar plumage but are themselves larger, and have not been recorded on the Chasm Islands. South Island pied oyster catchers, which have been recorded in the Chasms, are also quite similar in appearance, but can be distinguished by being smaller and less sturdy, as well as having a more distinct demarcation between the black and white feathering on the chest. Chasm birds also have larger feet proportionally than their relatives, likely as an adaptation to the more rocky terrain. Birds are around 48cm in length and weigh around 600 grams, being endemic to the Chasm Islands, as mentioned, 800 kilometers to the east of mainland New Zealand, inhabiting South East, Pitt, Mangaroo, and the main Chasm Islands. They feed on mollusks and marine worms, digging them out of the sand with their sturdy probing bills, and then hammering open their shells with said beaks to get to the edible elements. They prefer to forage on coastline to lagoon shorelines, doing so mostly on indertidal rock platforms and sandy beaches, although some birds have been found in pasture environments. Birds are monogamous and share incubation duties, defending their breeding and feeding territories throughout the year, preferring coastal areas around rocky and sandy sites, with their nest being simple scrapes in sand or gravel. Females will lay two to three eggs, with the chicks being immediately mobile and being able to fly at six weeks of age, either dispersing or staying with their parents for several months more, being able to live to up to 30 years. Birds numbered as few as 50 in 1970, and were estimated in the late 1980s to be around 110, and were feared to be continually declining. Conservation efforts in the early 1990s and throughout the early 2000s set out to focus on and reduce the threats the oyster catchers faced and there were and are certainly a lot of threats they needed to deal with. Introduced predators are the biggest one, with cats, rats, possums and hedgehogs all posing a big threat, especially to eggs, with weka, introduced to the Chassams in 1905, also being another factor to deal with. Stock, like sheep and cows, have also been observed to roam onto beaches and disturb nesting birds, also having the possibility of trampling their nests, although better stock management has meant that this is no longer as much of an issue. As well as this, a lack of suitable breeding habitats as a result of clearing a lot of their coastal land for farming, as well as the introduction of marum grass, has also led to their numbers going down. Marum grass was introduced in the 1920s to stop sand dune movements and to protect farmlands, with it having the effects of forming dense swords along coastlines and artificially steeping sand dunes and changing their profile, making them far steeper than dunes with native grasses like pingo and leaving fewer open areas for the birds to nest in. This in turn forces the oyster catchers to nest close to the high tide line where said waves can more easily wash away nests. Plans involving moving nests onto more safe grounds, including on top of tyres and restoring dunes, by removing the marum grasses and replanting with natives, have been quite effective. Said intensive management has had some positive impacts, with productivity yearly increasing from an average of 0.35 to 1.0 chicks per pair per year, with an influx of young birds entering the breeding population leading to a doubling of the population as well. Still though, birds are still endangered due to their small population and range, although their future outlook is a quietly optimistic one, with a population at around 350 birds. With this currently stable population and education about protecting chicks by being more careful with vehicles, dogs or livestock, hopefully birds continue to increase in population. And with that, I thank you for watching this instalment of New Zealand's Bird of the Week. For next time, you are now able to vote for the New Zealand Owlet Nightjar, small nocturnal insectivores that's were the largest of their kind. With that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.